This is ABC 7 News at noon. Your Suncoast News. We're here for you. Hello and welcome. I'm Scott Dennis. Thanks so much for joining us. Topping our news today at noon, the suspect accused of a mass shooting at the Fort Lauderdale Airport last week makes his first court appearance today. The shooting left five people dead, six others wounded. ABC's Elizabeth Hurd joins us live from New York now with the latest this afternoon. Elizabeth. Scott, good afternoon. The suspect was in court briefly. He answered a few yes or no questions, but said nothing else. And so why this happened, we still don't know. But as for a timeline, according to authorities, he planned his trip to Florida just last week and booked a one-way ticket to Fort Lauderdale on Tuesday. In shackles and wearing a prison jumpsuit this morning, Esteban Santiago at one point looked straight into the cameras, leaving the Broward County Jail for the federal courthouse. The 26-year-old facing a judge for a crime caught on this disturbing airport surveillance video obtained by TMZ. Santiago coming into view from the left, pulling out his gun and firing away. The terrified passengers walking behind him, running for cover. Police say Santiago emptied his 9mm semi-automatic handgun before reloading one more time, killing five. Among the dead, 84-year-old Olga Waltering of Georgia and Michael Olmey of Iowa, his wife Carrie, one of six people injured. I couldn't believe it. I just was in shock. Santiago's ex-girlfriend now telling ABC News the Iraq War veteran came back from his last deployment a changed man. He started acting weird when he was in Puerto Rico and we had let veterans know that he was having some mental problems, that he wasn't feeling all right, and they did nothing. This as new questions emerge as to why the gun wasn't taken away from him last November when he told the FBI in Alaska he was hearing voices about ISIS. The gun was taken away from him, but it was is given back after he was uh, cleared. Well, ABC News has also learned the FBI is now examining Santiago's computer because he allegedly told authorities that he has been in contact with ISIS online. His next court date was set today for January 23rd. Reporting live in New York, I'm Elizabeth here for ABC 7 Suncoast News. Scott, back to you. All right, Elizabeth, thank you so much for that update. Here at home, security is still on high alert at Sarasota Bradenton International Airport. Airport officials say passengers will no doubt notice officers with long guns on patrol throughout the facility. We'll have more on the story tonight in our evening newscast. Now the news today, the second suspect in a 15-year-old Charlotte County murder case goes to trial this week. David McManus faces first-degree murder charges in the death of 19-year-old Tara Sadarovich. In 2001, Sadarovich disappeared from her family's home. Her remains were found six months later in a wooded area of Punta Gorda. The case went cold for a decade. She was last seen by McManus and another suspect, Philip Barr. Barr was tried and convicted in 2015 for the murder. McManus's trial starts this morning. New information this afternoon in a Sarasota shooting. Sarasota County Sheriff's investigators say Glenn Oliver was shot and killed after breaking into a home on Constitution Boulevard on Sunday. Deputies say Oliver was shot by the homeowner who found him inside his home. Deputies say Oliver assaulted the homeowner and was armed with a baseball bat. The homeowner shot in self-defense. The investigation, though, is ongoing. An overnight fire damages a Sarasota nightclub. Firefighters responding to the office bar this morning just before 4 o'clock. No injuries were reported, and fire officials say the fire was small and was put out by the building's sprinkler system. Open enrollment for Manatee County High School students runs today through the end of the week. The district is expecting a bump in the number of students transferring in. And as ABC 7's Adam Cellini is here to explain, it could include athletes who are no longer bound by strict transfer rules. Adam? Yeah, Scott, a new state law will take effect this coming school year that allows student athletes to transfer schools and cross district lines without the previous repercussions of sitting out a season or losing eligibility. The Manatee County School District is anticipating a bump of 700 to 1,000 total students, which they say is normal growth. Schools that are at capacity will not accept any transfers if it displaces any of their current students. However, the same will not apply to roster spots on teams unless a student athlete transfers mid-season. Officials say students that live in the district will still have priority over those who do not, and some local coaches say it is hard to predict right now how this will affect their teams moving forward. It's really uncertain. We're, we're really 
Um, we're going through a transition into a whole new new era of, of education in general. And the public school system and things like that is just like it's always been. They have to physically attend. The only big change is it's, it's kind of broadened the scope of where they have options to transfer. And students in virtual or charter schools will also be allowed to now choose which sports program they would like to join. Previously, they could only play for their zoned high school. Scott. All right, Adam, thank you so much. Manatee County School District also showing its appreciation to our first responders. During this First Responders Week, the school district is offering free lunch to any first responder who shows up to school in uniform. And anyone who wants to take up the offer must check in at the front office, whichever school they choose. First responders can come in at any time of the day and be appreciated on this week. And a chilly start to our Monday here in the Sun Coast. Mm. Meteorologist John Scalzi is here. It was, a, yeah. it was kind of a rough weekend with the rain and then Very the cold. Very yes. Big storms around yeah. and some pretty good rainfall amounts, you know, an inch or better in many locations. Yeah. And uh, cold weather indeed, 36 degrees. This morning it was 40 degrees, but I saw some wind chills that were down in the uh, lower 30s, 33 wow. degrees. And uh, Becky in Omayaka, you know, who always has colder temperatures, yeah. but uh, nevertheless, she reported in with a, a 34-degree um, uh, air temperature. So, which is very cold and yeah. really not representative of every place, but certainly an indication of just how uh, cold it got in some locations. We are looking at uh, clear skies out there to start the morning, a beautiful sunrise under a crystal blue sky, high pressure beating down on us, producing lots of sunshine, rain-free conditions, and some very dry air around here as well. All of our atmosphere across the southern two-thirds of the state of Florida is going to modify with time. It's going to modify because we're going to get a little more moisture in here. We've got a few showers in Highlands County. Actually, I don't think we'll see much around here, but it will bring our nighttime lows up a little bit by moistening the atmosphere. It'll make the air feel a little more comfortable. And we're going to also modify the atmosphere by all the sunshine that we're getting. Check out the satellite view. I think we'll probably today get up into the upper 60s for a daytime high. Talk about a rebound. And over the next several days, that warming trend continues. We'll talk about that in just a few minutes, Scott. All right, John, thank you. Happening tonight, the Sarasota County Council of Neighborhood Associations is looking to get your input on how to better prevent crimes. Sarasota Police Officer Sherry McKeon will be giving a presentation on the most effective ways to prevent many crimes that are reported in the city. The chair of the Sarasota Coalition of City Neighborhoods will also be speaking on what she's doing to combat crimes in her community. The event begins at 6.30 tonight at the Sarasota Garden Club. The meeting is free and it is open to the public. ABC 7 business commentator Richard Stern joins us now. And Richard, a mixed market to start this new week on Wall Street, at least so far. Scott, you're exactly right. And, of course, all I heard all weekend is when is the Dow Jones Industrial Average going to get to 20,000? <laughs> well, based on what we're doing today, we're not going to get there today. But markets can turn very quickly. The Dow Jones Industrial Average has been down all day long, the low of the day so far, minus 70, although we've recovered a great deal of that at the same time. Yes, a mixed market. The NASDAQ closing it, or not closing, I'm sorry, intraday, still another all-time high. So let's take a look at the figures as they stand right now. The Dow Jones Industrial Average down just about 25 points, a little over one-tenth of one percent at 19,939.12 on volume of 387 million shares. The NASDAQ is the up arrow, up 14 points, one-quarter of one percent at 5,535.08. That on volume of 707 million shares. And the S&P barely moving at all, down just over two points, one-tenth of one percent, at 2,274.70. McDonald's announced today that it is selling 80 percent of its ownership in McDonald's in China. Indeed, of that 80 percent, 52 percent will be owned by a Chinese investment firm, a firm not unlike Goldman Sachs. 28% is going to be owned by a company based in New York, the privately held Carlyle Group, while McDonald's will, in fact, continue to own 20%. McDonald's is getting $2.1 billion in cash for the 80% ownership that it's giving up, but that doesn't mean McDonald's is going to stop growing in China. They say that they will open 1,500 new restaurants in China over the next five years. So a change in a substantial amount of ownership, but McDonald's is certainly committed to China, Scott. Sounds like it. That's a big number of restaurants that are Absolutely. opening. Uh, let's remind folks you've got a, uh, an investment workshop coming up soon. Yes, we do. It's actually Thursday of next week. And there you see it, Thursday, January 19th at 1.30 in the afternoon at our office. 
2017, what investors need to know, and I think they need to know an awful lot, please feel free to RSVP 906-2847. Again, 906-2847, the day before Inauguration Day, Thursday, January 19th at 1.30 in the afternoon, and we'd love to have you come out and get a chance to meet us and uh, give us a chance to meet you and tell you what we think is going to happen for the remainder of the year. All right, Richard, thanks so much. We'll see you later today. I'll be here at 5. Sounds good. Thank you so. Uh, time now to get over to the kitchen and check in with our ABC7 Culinary Director, Judy Gallagher, who has the perfect dish for a cold day like today. Judy? Hey there, Scott. Well, maybe by the end of the week we'll have chili gazpacho, but today it's all about the cool weather outside. I'm making chicken minestrone soup. Now I'm going to top it off with some simple everything flatbreads that you can pick up just at the fresh market in the cracker aisle, and I'm going to top it with Parmesan cheese. We're going to sweat out the vegetables. We're going to cook the noodles right into the soup that makes it even more hearty and bring up a lot of flavor with some fresh fennel and other vegetables. It's easy, but most importantly, important it's going to warm your soul in a day like today so stay with me throughout the hour as I bring you a pot of chicken minestrone soup check out mysuncoast.com slash dining your guide to the foodie lifestyle If you're not in control, then who is? Live above the influence. Hi, I'm Chef Judy. Every Wednesday morning, I'll be with the chefs at the Publix Aprons Cooking School serving up the most wonderful dishes. Watch Aprons in the Kitchen every Wednesday on ABC 7's Good Morning Suncoast. Rose takes her volunteering for Tidewell Hospice very seriously, but she knows how to have fun too. And that's what she brings when we're invited to visit patients as part of Tidewell's pet therapy program. People love to see her. She really brightens their day. She makes people smile. And in end-of-life care, a smile can be a wonderful gift. Tidewell Hospice. It's more than you think. So many possibilities worth exploring. Manasola flooring. Looking for carpet? Look no further. Minnesota Flooring has smart strand carpet as low as $1.79 per square foot. Installed, no add-ons or extras. Unbelievable? Minnesota Flooring can have in-stock carpet installed in your home in 48 hours for as low as $1.99 per square foot. Don't miss these prices. Visit Minnesota Flooring today. Since 1972, Sleep King has provided quality mattresses and accessories at the best discounted prices available. Top brands like Simmons, Sealy, Serta, Beautyrest, iComfort, and more. With available free delivery, free financing, and free setup and removal. For a comfortable night's sleep with same day delivery, even if we have to carry it on our backs. Trust Sleep King of Sarasota. Buy it today, sleep on it tonight. I support Goodwill because when I donate or shop, I have the power! The power to change lives! Now, the official Suncoast weather with ABC7 meteorologist John Scalzi. Yeah, temperatures are starting to rebound, but we've still got some cool ones around the state of Florida. Taking a look at the maps, we've got uh, 48 degrees in Tallahassee. We've got uh, uh, 64 degrees in Orlando, 61 in Tampa, 67 in Fort Myers, Naples at 69, Jacksonville at 54 degrees. And locally, the temperatures are uh, not too bad, actually, with 64 degrees in Wachula, 66 in Arcadia, 65 Mayaka City, Venice now coming in at 67 degrees. We've got 63 degrees in Sarasota and 63 degrees in Bradenton. We are probably inching our way up to a daytime high temperature of about 68 degrees. Winds were kind of brisk, though, and still are a little breezy. That's the reason that we had that morning wind chill of around 33. Um, you know, those winds are going to be subsiding as we head into the afternoon, and that's 
kind of important to the forecast. They're really going to subside, I think, by tomorrow. We might get a brief little surge in the evening of wind, of wind speeds. But in general, the trend will be for the winds to come down further and further over the next 24 hours, which is great because when they do, it's going to allow the atmosphere to modify even faster. So that's a good thing. The easterly wind flow, which has been kind of brisk and still is east northeast coming in at about 14 right now, is helping to transport moisture from the other coast, which is helpful because it'll take that dew point value and continue to make it rise. We're at a 44 degree dew point now. And that dew point, the higher it goes, the better it is for us in terms of, well, first of all, how the air feels and the nighttime lows as well. High pressure, the dominant weather feature for most of the deep south, the Florida Peninsula, really stretching all the way back to the lower plains. And then low pressure areas to the north of us are going to provide for some, uh, well, some pretty good impressive snowfall totals in some locations. This low is really going to pile it up in Denver. Plus, we've got some rain, uh, snow showers, transitioning to rain showers um, along the Great Lakes, the eastern sides of the Great Lakes, and be some impressive snowfall totals there as well. They'll probably avoid the major cities, which is good. The airport hubs will be uh, kind of uh, missing that action. So we're grateful about that. High pressure across the deep south, providing a little bit of rain shower activity for the other coast. Don't think we'll see much around here, but we will pick up the extra moisture. And that northeast wind starting to subside as that high builds in across the deep south. So we warm up early, as we already are. We'll continue that warming again tomorrow and the day after. Sunny skies and we will probably be above average by Wednesday and stay that way right through the rest of the week. Uh, you can see a few of the fair weather clouds building in the Atlantic and the Gulf waters caused by that generally cold air over a relatively warmer water. And we get these kinds of streets clouds that are fairly benign. They really don't pretend too much in the way of any kind of bad weather for us. Snow showers in the northern tier, also the Great Lakes send in back to the west. The Pineapple Express continues to drop heavy totals of rainfall in parts of California all the way up into uh, Oregon, and it's leading to some mudslide issues there. Otherwise, most of the country is quiet today. Northeast wind coming in at about 10 to 15. Look for choppy conditions on your bay and inland waters, and the forecast for the remainder of the week looks good as temperatures modify and moderate. We'll be looking at uh, daytime highs that get close to the 80 degree mark by the time we hit the end of the work week. Scott. All right, John, thank you. In health news today, more women were more likely to get mammograms under Obamacare. According to new numbers from the American Cancer Society, the number of mammograms increased for older women under the Affordable Care Act. Obamacare eliminated the cost and out-of-pocket expenses for Americans wanting preventative health care services such as mammography and colonoscopy. Both tests are able to detect cancer. Women 40 and older are recommended to get mammograms every one to two years. Here at home, the Longbow Key Town Commission is meeting today to go over a proposal for a new program that would provide better care to residents while also decreasing the number of calls to 911. The program is called Community Assistance Resource and Education. It would be available to patients recently released from Sarasota Memorial Hospital after being treated for stroke, diabetes, or other issues. Those who sign up would get free weekly welfare checks from the fire department. Fire officials can also connect the patient with other people and services they may need. The proposal was created by Longboat Key Fire Chief Paul Desi in response to the number of calls the department gets from people falling every year. Believe it or not, back to work blues is actually a medical condition that can be treated. Although there's no official name for it, doctors say that sad feeling we get about going back to work after the holidays is considered a mental disorder. One main symptom is crankiness. Experts say that it can be brought on by overeating, over drinking, and not sleeping enough during your break. It can even cause heart attack and depression. To get back into the habit of things, experts suggest doing small things like being friendly to random co-workers and walking away from your desk at least once an hour. Well, a man in Missouri is helping the Red Cross by donating blood, and lots of it, 30 gallons over a 60-year period. Rob Sneed shares his story. At 82 years old, Marvin Scare just accomplished a rare feat. These are my gallon pens from, from my... Uh... 30 gallons. That's the amount of blood he's donated, and he even has his original ID card from the Red Cross. Since uh, 1953. He's a man of few words, but Marvin told us his need to help came from his family when he was just a teenager. My brother was in Korea, and he was injured in the war, and 
my mom went to the blood bank and took me along. And that's how he got it started. And he clearly hasn't stopped. Today he wears this shirt proudly. Every pint matters. 240 pints, 30 gallons. It makes me feel good. Why? Just because it's helping somebody. Members of his family have also stepped up. Just yesterday, they took these pictures while donating at a blood drive. Marvin can't be happier, and neither can the Red Cross. Hero, uh, lifesaver, I mean, that's what, he, that's what he's basically doing. But the Red Cross says they need more donors. Blood donations are down in the Missouri, Illinois area by nearly 320 compared to the same time last year. Obviously, some weather has impacted it, too. It makes it a little more difficult for people to get to some of the blood drives or the donor center, especially people like Marvin. Now, Marvin says he plans on donating even more blood within the next eight weeks. Keep it going. Thank you so much for that effort. Still to come in your Suncoast News, tragedy in the early morning on the streets of Orlando. The circumstances that caused two on-duty officers to lose their lives. But first, it's game time in Tampa as the Crimson Tide gets ready to take on the Clemson Tigers. This is a live look of Raymond James Stadium. We'll have a preview of the big game coming up right after this. All hands on deck. What's up? I want to point out three tips for using the home computer more safely. Point away. First, stop. Make sure your software is up to date and that you've password protected your computer's login and Wi-Fi connection. Next, think before visiting a site, opening attachments, or clicking on links. Then connect, knowing you're helping make the web safer for you. And for everyone. Make Stop, Think, Connect part of your daily online routine. Whee! Check out My Sun Coast Dining on MySunCoast.com, your guide to the foodie lifestyle. ABC7's own Chef Judy serves up her favorite recipes, cooking tips and trends, dining blogs, step-by-step -step videos, and Sun Coast Restaurant Guide. You'll find it all at MySunCoast.com slash dining. Are you considering joint replacement or revision surgery? Consider this. Dr. Edward Stolarski has performed thousands of successful joint replacement procedures and trained surgeons from all over the world. Using advanced technologies, Dr. Stolarski is able to perform some of the most complex surgeries. I wish I knew about Dr. Stolarski much sooner. After the surgery, I don't have any pain. It's like I've got a 16-year-old hip. My name's Ed Stolarski. What I really do is I give people back their life. Schedule a consultation today. Florida's last private island is a waterfront lifestyle like no other. This is Harbor Isle, just five minutes from the sugar sand beaches of Anna Maria Island. This sun-splashed paradise invites you to enjoy natural adventures and all the recreation of a tropical resort. Island coach homes and waterfront condos are now available from the high 400s. Don't miss the Luxury by the Bay event, Saturday, January 21st from noon till 4 p.m. at Harbor Isle. Water ski show, luxury cars, wine tasting, model home tours, and more. What to do when your heating or air conditioning needs service or heaven forbid replacement? Call Air Now today. We've been serving Sarasota and Manatee County since 1946. We offer $49.95 tune-ups, lease or finance options, and remember, service today or it's free. Is your old garage door stuck or broken? Would a new one give you a lift? Let Precision Door Overhead Garage Door Service of Sarasota come to the rescue with prompt and affordable repair service. Replacement doors come with an array of styles and colors, and they are rated to meet and exceed Florida standards. From estimates to installation, your satisfaction is our priority. If you're not 100% satisfied with any product, service, or installation, we will make it right, because Precision Door Service is a name you can trust. Hours after the Pittsburgh Steelers beat the Miami Dolphins, one of the Steelers' assistant coaches was arrested. Joey Porter is now facing charges after an altercation at a bar. Porter's charges include aggravated assault, resisting arrest, and public drunkenness. The Steelers say they're aware of the incident and are still gathering information. Speaking of the Steelers, Pittsburgh carries an eight-game win streak to Kansas City next weekend, where they'll take on the Chiefs on Sunday. Also in the playoffs, the Green Bay Packers taking down the New York Giants last evening, 38-13 in Green Bay. They'll now face off against the Dallas Cowboys. That happens on Sunday. The Packers will be going to Texas with a seven-game win streak. And they look good in the second half last night. Happening tonight, it's the Super Bowl of college football. The Alabama Crimson Tide and Clemson Tigers facing off for the national championship. Game time is tonight at 8 o'clock at Raymond James Stadium in Tampa. Both teams have been preparing all week for this showdown. Both coaches say they're very proud of their teams, regardless of what happens tonight. 
I appreciate the effort that our team has put in from the very start of the season uh, all the way through the season in the off season to uh, give themselves an opportunity to uh, have a chance to play in this game against a very good Clemson team. This is this is what we're doing right now. And I just believe you you try to be great where you are, man. And uh, I, I, I'm very thankful to be here. As of yesterday, tickets for the game on StubHub range from $1,500 to $17,000 for a sideline spot. Again, the game starts tonight at 8 o'clock. Let's get back to the kitchen now and check in for a, a meal that might go good with that game, chicken minestrone soup. Hi, Judy. Hi, Scott. I think it's a perfect thing to serve for the game. So we're sauteing some onions, just sweating them. I don't want them to get brown. With just a little pinch of crushed red pepper, that's going to give it a little pop. And I'm going to add some dry oregano. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take just some kitchen twine and some parsley and just two pieces of lemon peel should probably do it for a pot this size. And I'm going to tie this string up. And it's just going to make this really catch that piece of lemon there. And it's just going to make this really flavorful bunch that we're going to take out later on. Now, you can stick the, the top parts of fennel right into that bundle. But I have them so big that I can just drop it right in. They're going to be removed when we start to eat this. Then we're going to add our chicken stock and broth. I usually do 50% stock to 50% broth. Of course, the, the broth is really going to give it that deeper flavor as well. And by all means, if you're looking to cut down on your sodium, read the labels and make sure that you get the lower sodium broth. I tend to make a lot of homemade stock, and I'll just keep it in the freezer and take it out as I need it for a recipe like this. So now we have, oh, probably about eight cups of broth stock in the pot. We've sauteed the onions, so we're going to bring this up to temperature a little bit more to really start getting hot. Once it gets hot, we're going to add bone-in chicken breasts. The reason why we use the bone-in is it's going to give it a lot more flavor. A boneless chicken breast, it's, first of all, it's a waste of money to spend the extra money for boneless, and you're not, it's going to cook really quickly. Here you're going to get the flavor, the richness of the bone, but take the skin off because it'll add too much fat. So let's go ahead once that's up to temperature to put the chicken breasts in, and they'll cook for about, oh, probably anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes. Get that soaked down in there, and then you'll pull the chicken out. You'll let it sit for about 10 minutes just so you don't burn your hands, and the chicken will easily pull off the bone. So we'll do that, then we'll slice it into small pieces. Now when we come back, I'm going to add the vegetables and Parmesan rind, which is going to give it that wonderful hearty flavor. Just what you need tonight is you're cheering on your team. At SWC Properties, we pride ourselves in providing to you the very best in customer satisfaction and the secrets getting out. Maybe that's why so many people have chosen to list their homes with our friendly and qualified agents. After all, it only makes sense to list with a growing agency that markets in so many places. To list your home with SWC, give us a call at our office. And ask for Beth Ann Muley. I am a veteran. My victory was finding the strength to be a champion. My victory is having a job I can be proud of. At DAV, we help veterans get the benefits they've earned. My victory was finishing my education. My victory was getting help to put our lives back together. DAV provides veterans with a lifetime of support. My victory is being there for my family. Help us support more victories for veterans. Go to DAV.org. Today at 4 on Suncoast View. I'm Joey Panic on Suncoast View. The Venice Theatre musical Sister Act performs right here, plus red carpet recap from the Golden Globes and the Drunken Poet Cafe in the kitchen. Today at 4 on Suncoast View. Selling your home? Insist on a 3D showcase tour from Gulf Shores Realty. Virtual tours are flat and boring and look more like a slideshow than a tour. A 3D tour from Gulf Shores Realty is like actually walking through the home without the drive. Get instant access to your next home from any device. Multiple views give home buyers a perspective like no other. For a limited time, mention ABC7 and Gulf Shores Realty will provide a complimentary 3D tour with your new listing. 
our goal is to do things better than anybody in the country. What makes Sarasota Memorial Hospital's program so special is that it's taking care of the patient in every aspect of cardiovascular disease. And in this community, the, the patients are very active. The idea is not just to get them over that operation, but to get them back to doing the things that they enjoy doing. Today, everyone is looking for carpeting that lasts longer. G. Freed has you covered with Karistan. With a legacy of quality and integrity, we provide you with a huge selection of Karistan carpets with exclusive lifetime limited warranties. All installed by our highly skilled, highly knowledgeable team. Come ask us why Karistan is the best and most durable. G. Freed Flooring America. Our world is at your feet. It's time to go boating, but first, don't miss the 16th Annual Charlotte County Boat Show, January 12th to the 15th at the Charlotte County Fairgrounds. Show admission is free and on-site parking is only $5. January 12th to the 15th. Visit GoBoatingFlorida.com for more information. Live from our studios on Florida's Sun Coast, this is ABC 7 News at noon. Your Sun Coast News. We're here for you. Welcome back. Developing in Central Florida, an officer is shot and killed while on duty and another dies while pursuing the gunman. A manhunt continues at this hour for the shooter. Sergeant Deborah Clayton was shot and killed this morning in Orlando near a Walmart store. Clayton was a 17-year veteran of the Orlando Police Department. Deputies say they are searching for 41-year-old Markeith Lloyd, the suspected shooter. An Orange County Sheriff's deputy was also killed in a traffic crash. He was riding a motorcycle and crashed while pursuing Lloyd. Earlier, at least seven police officers and sheriff's deputies were seen escorting an ambulance carrying Sergeant Clayton to the hospital shortly after the shooting. Several schools in that area are now still on lockdown. Final testimonies are expected in the death penalty trial for Dylan Roof today. Prosecutors hope to wrap up their arguments that Roof should be sentenced to death for the killing of nine black church members at a South Carolina church in June of 2015. Roof told investigators he wanted to start a race war. He's representing himself and has said he plans to call no witnesses in his own defense. Jurors are expected to deliberate as early as tomorrow on whether Roof should get the death penalty or spend the rest of his life in prison. Closer to home, police in Tampa arresting several people this weekend for serving food to the homeless without a permit. Facebook video captures the scene from Saturday Police say the group Food Not Bombs gathered at a park in downtown Tampa. But officers say the group did not get the city's approval or the proper permitting to distribute the food. In the video, the officers are seen offering alternatives, but the group continued to set up tables. They were told they would be arrested, but they continued. Seven people refused to stop and were taken in. They were given notices to appear in court on misdemeanor charges. Another storm system bringing rain and potential of worst flooding in more than a decade to parts of the West Coast. ABC's Mar Rob Marciano explains. Overnight, the powerful storm slamming the West Coast, wreaking havoc for those on the roads. More than 10 inches of rain submerging streets in Northern California, leaving many stranded. Watch as firefighters flip over this SUV with their bare hands. Rescue swimmers and divers dispatched in Oakland after this taxi plunged into an estuary. The driver, one of four killed in this deadly storm. In Napa, the river rising 10 feet in just seven hours. Look at the amount of water spilling over this dam and blasting down this hill. And mudslides making highways like Interstate 80 impassable. The storm bringing powerful wind gusts over 60 miles an hour, toppling trees, littering highways along the coast. This giant sequoia hollowed out in 1880, historically known as Pioneer Cabin Tree, collapsed after weekend storms tore through Sequoia National Park. And this morning in Reno, Nevada, We need to evacuate the area for your safety. The governor declaring a state of emergency. The river relentlessly rising. More than 1,000 homes evacuated as it braces for the worst flooding in a decade. In Oregon, the same storm spreading ice across the roads there. Oregon State Police troopers responding to more than 750 traffic incidents statewide in just the past 36 hours. Rob Marciano reporting from the West Coast there. And uh, boy, you know, they, they've had such a long drought and then they get... Yes. Too much rain all at once, you know. All at once. Yeah. And then those uh, little 
gullies and valleys that they have in Northern California, 10 inches of rain is a lot yeah, of rain. Sure it's a lot of rain for us, and we yeah. have very permeable soils, yeah. but in that area where you concentrate it all into the, yeah. oh, it's a horrible situation for them. Yeah. Atmospheric rivers, AR as they call them, Pineapple Express, just right. pumping that moisture right in there. We don't have anything like that. We have a big ridge of just the opposite. High pressure over us. High pressure providing us with a lovely start to the day. Lakewood Ranch webcam showing a little bit of a breeze out there. You can see a few of those trees kind of bending and twisting and shaking with the breeze. That caused us a wind chill this morning of 33 degrees. In fact, many, many hours we had temperatures. The feels like temperature was in the uh, 30s, so uh, very chilly start. Won't see that tomorrow. A lot of sunshine across the state of Florida, as this satellite view shows, which will provide us with the energy necessary to boost our temperature up to about 68 degrees for a daytime high. And that warming trend will continue on in the days ahead as the temperatures cool, moisture returns, and we'll see uh, above average temperatures before long. We'll talk about that in just a few minutes, Scott. All right, John, thank you. New controversy hitting Washington today as the confirmation hearings for President-elect Donald Trump's cabinet gets ready to begin. The, both Democrats and Republicans are now threatening a showdown over that process. Meanwhile, Trump is in another Twitter battle, this time with an A-list celebrity act, actress. ABC's Lana Zak has more from Washington. Republicans are ramping up for a flurry of confirmation hearings this week. First up, Attorney General nominee Senator Jeff Sessions and General John Kelly for Secretary of Homeland Security. Then on Wednesday, more nominees will take the hot seat, including Rex Tillerson, President-elect Donald Trump's controversial pick for the Secretary of State post. In all, the Senate plans to take up eight of Mr. Trump's picks this week. That schedule so intense, a top government ethics official warns it's putting undue pressure on investigators. Republican leader Mitch McConnell, who met with Mr. Trump this morning at Trump Towers, refused Democrats' request to slow down the process to finish their vetting. Here he is speaking on Face the Nation. All of these little procedural complaints are related to their frustration at having not only lost the White House, but having lost the Senate. I understand that, but we need to sort of grow up here and get past that. It was a different story eight years ago when Senator McConnell insisted that all of then-President-elect Obama's cabinet picks have their background checks completed and financial disclosures in before their confirmation hearings began. But the political news getting the most discussion right now relates to Meryl Streep and her speech during last night's Golden Globes. Disrespect invites disrespect. Violence incites violence. When the powerful use their position to bully others, we all lose. The indictment of Mr. Trump prompting the president-elect to tweet that, quote, Meryl Streep is one of the most overrated actresses in Hollywood. Mr. Trump went on to say he does not know Ms. Streep, but called her, quote, a Hillary flunky who lost big. Lana Zak, ABC News, Washington. Happening tonight, CNN is holding a town hall meeting with Vermont Senator and former presidential candidate Bernie Sanders. He'll be taking questions on major issues facing the nation and talk about the Democratic strategy for dealing with the incoming Trump administration. A one-hour event airs from George Washington University beginning tonight at 9. In consumer news, another arrest in the Volkswagen emissions scandal. The New York Times reporting the FBI has arrested Volkswagen executive Oliver Schmidt on charges of conspiracy to defraud the United States. Schmidt led the German automaker's regulatory compliance office in the U.S. from 2014 until March of 2015. He was arrested yesterday in Florida and is expected to be arraigned later today in Detroit. Tax filing season officially begins January 23rd. The IRS is expecting more than 153 million tax returns to be filed this year. The IRS will hold refunds for Taxpayers claiming the earned income tax credit or additional child tax credit until February 15th to give the agency a little more time to detect any fraud. The deadline to file your taxes, April 18th. And Apple recognizing a major milestone with its iPhones today. The original iPhone celebrating its 10-year anniversary. Back in 2007, the late Apple CEO Steve Jobs introduced the device to the world and it quickly took off and started the smartphone age. The iPhone was made, uh, has made Apple one of the top technological companies in the, plot in the world, and a new device is expected sometime later this year. Look forward to that. Back to the kitchen now and see how lunch is coming with ABC7 Culinary Director Judy Gallagher, a delicious soup on a cool day on the Sun Coast.
Get your spoon ready, Scott. It's almost done. So to accompany this, instead of getting a loaf of bread, which would be wonderful, but I want to have a little bit less carbs, I picked up the Everything Flatbreads, and then I'm just taking some grated Parmesan, even Gruyere you could put on it. And I'm going to pop it in the oven at about 375 degrees, just for probably two to three minutes till the Parmesan just starts to begin to brown. It's going to be perfect. Now I also, whenever I buy Parmesan, I make sure that I save the rinds, that hard part on the outer part, and that goes right in the soup. It's wonderful when you're making pasta or soup to just put that rind in there. You're going to remove it when the soup is done because it will get almost glumpy. It kind of comes out looking like a dumpling. So that's when you'll take it out, but it will extract so much flavor. So now let's get to the vegetables. We're going to add some diced zucchini. The fennel, the bulb, we're going to dice that up a little bit, break that up, and then carrots and celery. And we're going to let this cook for probably just about 15 minutes is when it's going to come together. Once the vegetables are just starting to get tender, the chicken's taken out and pulled off the bone, then we're going to add noodles. Now normally I don't cook the noodles inside the soup because it keeps all the starch in, but minestrone, you want it a little bit thick, and the best way to do that is to cook the noodles in it. So once this comes back to a boil, we're going to add some spinach noodles that I had in my cabinet, and that will really complete the dish. We'll taste it, we'll make sure it's ready to go, and just before I scoop it up, just a little fresh lemon juice, not even a teaspoon, just to give that acid that's going to brighten it up, and it's going to be perfect when we serve it with some of that shredded cheese. So the flatbreads just have about another minute. And we're going to just check the seasoning just a bit on our new batch of soup. And as I thought, perhaps we could use a little more oregano. Now, when you look in your cabinet, when you're out shopping, I'm a salt fan. I have a whole cabinet that's filled with different salts. This has fennel pollen in it, so I really love how it expresses it. So I'll add some of that with it as well. And then we're just about ready to serve. So I've got the flatbreads in the oven. I've got the soup simmering. I'm going to put some fresh organic spinach in it. And then I guess Scott and John can just put their feet up and relax because they've got comfort in a bowl coming up real soon. Check out My Suncoast Dining on MySuncoast.com, your guide to the foodie lifestyle. ABC7's own Chef Judy serves up her favorite recipes, cooking tips and trends, dining blog, step-by-step -step videos, and Suncoast Restaurant Guide. You'll find it all at MySuncoast.com slash dining. exotic animals on a daily basis and the ones that we have in captivity are really the ambassadors for their wild counterparts. I'm Clayton Rosaire from the Big Cat Habitat and Gulf Coast Sanctuary, housing over 150 exotic animals that needed a great home. And if you love animals, please help them. Do it locally. Support your local no-kill shelters, your local wild animal sanctuaries. Make a difference where you can. Flooring Depot has been serving Sarasota and Manatee counties for over 20 years with the best products and installation. Flooring Depot offers carpet, tile, hardwood, and more. Before you buy, give us a try. Stop by our showroom or visit us on the web at bestvaluecarpet.com. At Tidewell Hospice, we know it's never too late to say thank you to our military veterans. The Tidewell Honors Veterans Program has provided care to more than 13,000 military families since 2008. Tidewell volunteers help honor veterans through special pinning ceremonies that demonstrate our appreciation for the freedom our veterans fought to defend. If you know a veteran who can benefit from end-of-life care, call or visit Tidewell.org today. Tidewell Hospice, it's more than you think. Well, our temperatures have bounced back nicely from the morning low of 40. We're at 65 degrees in Wachula, 66 
in Arcadia, Mayaka at 66, 63, Sarasota, 68 in Venice, 63 in Bradenton. Probably top it out today, about 68 degrees. That's pretty nice. Winds are still kind of gusty and breezy out there. Watch for that, boaters. And uh, it does add a little bit of a raw edge to the air. I think some people aren't too keen about that gusty wind if you're one of those. Take heart, those winds will be coming down over the course of the next 24 hours. We'll see that, um, see that probably return to about half that speed in about 24 hours. 44 degree dew point on the rise. That dew point value increasing in part because of that gusty wind out of the east northeast at about 14. Transporting that moisture into our area. As I mentioned, 63 in Sarasota with plenty of sunshine around thanks to that big blue H. Plenty of high pressure building in. Coming in from, uh, well, it's the Atlantic High, snowsing in across the deep south, moving southward toward the Florida Peninsula. All in all, bringing us a very, very pleasant, pleasant day, I think. As that high sinks south, we're going to continue to see a lessening of those wind speeds and allow our temperatures to even further modify. So if it still feels a little chilly to you right now, well, tomorrow it'll be warmer, and I think we'll be well above average by the middle of the week and carry right on straight through into the weekend. So some pretty nice weather for us today. Warming, sunny skies, the warming trend carrying on all week long. Very nice, very nice. We have a little bit of fair weather cloudiness out in Gulf and Atlantic waters, but uh, these kinds of clouds require the water underneath, so we're not going to see too much of that over land. The only thing we might see is a few of them blown into our area over the next several days by a general northeasterly wind. We do have some storminess still back to the west. There are still some rain showers and storms in progress in California. Could be some heavy rain uh, yeah, up in the mountains as the uh, moisture is lifted. And we're having some snow showers still in the Olympic Mountain Ranges back to the east. On the eastern sides of the Great Lakes, we're seeing some lake effect snows and an area of low pressure producing some snow showers as well. For us, the only showers that we have in the state of Florida are kind of being brought over from the other coast by that easterly wind. I don't think we'll see too much around here. Not really even into the extended range. I don't think we're going to see too much. Air is going to be very shallow moist layer coming in, but it will increase our dew points and uh, hopefully keep our nighttime temperatures a little warmer in the daytime highs a little more comfortable for most folks. Northeast wind comes in at about 10 to 15 today. That'll bring you choppy conditions on Van Inland waters with two to four foot seas. Forecast for boating and for uh, other pleasure sports, I guess, out there on the waters at 1135. High tide has come and gone. Low tide won't come until 331, kind of in between the two. And then a high tide comes at 913 to this evening. Forecast for the week ahead shows those continually uh, warming temperatures. Nighttime lows as well, warming with a little more moisture around. And we'll be above average by the weekend. Scott? All right, thank you so much, John. The biggest names in movies and television gathering in Beverly Hills last night for the 74th Golden Globe Awards. David Daniel has a look at the biggest winners and moments. I really want to thank Atlanta and all the like black folks in Atlanta. Like African American stories and performers were well represented at the 74th Golden Globe Awards. Donald Glover won two trophies for his TV series Atlanta. Moonlight was named Best Motion Picture Drama. Viola Davis won Best Supporting Actress for Fences. And Tracy Ellis Ross of Blackish was the first black woman to win Best Actress in a Comedy Series in two dozen years. This is for all of the women, women of color, and colorful people whose stories, ideas, thoughts are not always considered worthy and valid and important, but I want you to know that I see you, we see you. Everyone saw La La Land. The musical won a record seven Golden Globes, including Best Musical or Comedy, Best Actress in that category for Emma Stone, and Best Actor for Ryan Gosling, who paid emotional tribute to his partner, Ava Mendez. Well, I was singing and dancing and uh, playing piano and having one of the best experiences I've ever had. On a film, my lady was raising our daughter, pregnant with our second, and uh, trying to help her brother fight his battle with cancer. But the night's biggest speech, six minutes, came from Cecil B. DeMille Award honoree Meryl Streep, who covered Hollywood, politics, the press, and the importance of empathy. As my friend, the dear departed Princess Leia said to me once, Take your broken heart, make it into art. Thank you for it. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel.
When we come back, we'll wrap up in the kitchen with Chef Judy, plus the top three movies that dominated this weekend at the box office. Entertainment News is next. Have you ever wondered what it's like to save a life? Find out by donating platelets at Suncoast Blood Bank. I'm Haley Wilgus, ABC7. Platelets aid in the clotting process and are vital in the treatment of cancer and surgical patients, trauma victims, and critically ill newborns. It's tough to keep enough on the shelves because they only last five days. To donate, call this number or visit scbb.org and you can help save a life. ABC7 congratulates Suncoast Blood Bank on 65 years of serving our community. You might feel like there's too many problems in the world or that you know you as a 15 year old 16 year old can't really make a difference it's not always about you it's not just one person it's it's a group it's a team just that simple act is transforming someone else's life it's one of the best feelings in the world it'll just make you feel so good about yourself i'd do anything to convince you just to be a part of this For more than 100 years, American Humane Association has been teaching kids to be kind to animals. Those in our homes, on the farms, on the silver screen, and wildlife conservation caring for the world's vanishing creatures. But we can't do it alone. Visit kindness100.org to find ways to teach kids how they can make a more caring, compassionate, and humane world for all of us. Check out My Sun Coast Dining on MySunCoast.com, your guide to the foodie lifestyle. ABC7's own Chef Judy serves up her favorite recipes, cooking tips and trends, dining blog, step-by-step -step videos, and Sun Coast Restaurant Guide. You'll find it all at MySunCoast.com slash dining. Gold fever has once again swept the nation. And everyone is rushing to Florida to strike it doubly rich. Introducing the $5 million Gold Rush Doubler. We're doubling cash prizes for over $752 million in payouts. And 36 prizes from $1 million to $5 million. The Florida Gold Rush is on. The Florida Lottery, just imagine. Hi, I'm Chef Judy. Every Wednesday morning, I'll be with the chefs at the Publix Aprons Cooking School serving up the most wonderful dishes. Watch Aprons in the Kitchen every Wednesday on ABC7's Good Morning Suncoast. It's time to go boating, but first, don't miss the 16th Annual Charlotte County Boat Show, January 12th to the 15th at the Charlotte County Fairgrounds. Show admission is free, and on-site parking is only $5. January 12th to the 15th. Visit GoBoatingFlorida.com for more information. Florida's last private island is a waterfront lifestyle like no other. This is Harbor Isle, just five minutes from the sugar sand beaches of Anna Maria Island. This sun-splashed paradise invites you to enjoy natural adventures and all the recreation of a tropical resort. Island coach homes and waterfront condos are now available from the high 400s. Don't miss the Luxury by the Bay event, Saturday, January 21st from noon till 4 p.m. at Harbor Isle. Water ski show, luxury cars, wine tasting, model home tours, and more. Too good for words. This is awesome. This soup is great. And these flatbreads, killer. It's just simple and it doesn't mm. fill you up that much than a big loaf of bread, you mm -hmm. know, but it's more substantial than a cracker. And I think it plays well with the balance of Parmesan in the soup and Parmesan on the cracker. So I think you're all mm. set to put your jammies on tonight, your slippers, and mm -hmm. watch the game and, mm. and relax a little bit, right? You make the best broth. I don't know how you do yeah. that. I don't know how you it's, do it, but you your know, broth is you awesome. You have to slow and low, slow and low, yeah. slow and low. And if you're not going to have your own homemade, by all means, use like the fresh market. I really, High quality really stuff. like yeah, Yeah, the difference, it's worth it. Pay another buck, mm. and it won't have MSG, so buy a good quality mm. brand. And I'll remind everybody Fantastic. right now, you can go on the dining page to get this recipe and so much more see our sponsored restaurants and see reviews and a great culinary tour so you can get the recipe and tuck into some soup tonight and I'll send it back to you Scott. Great stuff. Thank you so much Judy. In entertainment news police in Paris have arrested 16 people in the armed robbery of Kim Kardashian West. Back in October police say the reality star was robbed at gunpoint inside her hotel room. The robbers disguised themselves as police officers tied Kardashian West up and then locked her in a bathroom before making off with $10 million in cash and jewelry.
Rogue One, a Star Wars story, still taking the number one spot at the box office this weekend. In second place, it was the NASA drama, Hidden Figures. The animated musical Sing rounded out the top three. Finally this afternoon, cold temperatures brought a bit of snow to Georgia this weekend. That did not stop one swim team from practicing. Georgia Tech's swim meet was canceled Saturday because of the weather, so to pass the time, the relay team decided to do its own event, calling it the snow meet. Each team member braving the snow and cold, stripping down to their swim trunks to swim through the flakes. Video was shared on Georgia Tech's Facebook page. Look how powdery that snow is. Yeah, I think really that's cold hilarious. temperatures. Yeah, it is funny, that, isn't it? You know, right? Yeah. Brings a kid and all of us out, but I'm not going out there in my bathing suit. Wow. Brave, yeah. brave men. To do yeah. That. Yeah, I'm looking at that thinking hot shower, hot shower. That's, yeah. that's the only way around that. Well, we won't have any more of the really cold temperatures that we've had for the last two mornings. That's the good news, I think. Uh, we're getting a little more moisture in here. The atmosphere is going to modify with a little lighter wind speed and a lot more sunshine. So over the next several days, we're going to be back to above average temperatures, I think, by the time we hit Wednesday. And we'll stay there right straight into the weekend. Okay. Yeah. Didn't last That's long. it for soup, no. then. I know. That's it. <laughs> That's never it for soup. <laughs> have a wonderful afternoon. Thank you so much for being with us today. We'll see you again at 5 o'clock.